For reals, it's fun. Do you like fun? Fun. I'm still playing around with a review style where I'm trying to speak more directly to people who are interested in buying the phone. So if you're seriously considering throwing some money at the wing, I wanna chat my experiences with you here. If you aren't seriously considering shopping one of these, you can still watch this video, but we're not gonna play that dumb game of trying to stroke the ego of someone who already bought a more popular phone for better YouTube metrics or justify this or explained that. That, I'm getting really tired of that game. So you wanna have fun with your phone and are considering buying the LG Wing. I think you're in for a treat. This phone feels so fresh. I'm not breaking any new ground here, but the hardware is super satisfying. The screen slide, the hinge, and the way that there's a little bit of a float right before the screen locks into place. It feels real good, and it inspires a lot more confidence than I was expecting just looking at the leaks and renders. Changing something about the hardware of a phone changes your behavior. You do have to get a feel for handling it a little differently. There are two significant moving parts, so this phone will never be as durable as a traditional slab, but it feels hefty, it feels solid, and I feel should compete fine against dual displays and folding screens. It's always the little things like gesture navigation. It took me a day to get a feel for a lighter swipe for a back swipe on my right thumb so I didn't accidentally push the top of the display out. Different isn't bad, but different can sometimes be less familiar for how we've trained our muscle memory in the past. All that and adding this kind of hardware to the top of a phone, it, it makes the balance a little different. It's a little top heavy compared to what I'm used to. But for those unfamiliar differences, we get a whole extra screen to use in a form factor not too far off from a phone like the Velvet and without the additional hoop jumping required on a V60 or Velvet dual display case with a more organic approach to how apps might use the smaller hidden display. LG talked a big game about lifestyle features. Your controls get out out of the way while watching videos. And yeah, that kind of stuff is nice. Those are nice perks. I've always been a fan of old slider keyboard phones. I love having a full landscape view and not blocking that view with a software pop-up keyboard. The Wings variation on this idea is a little less familiar, but nails the feel of typing on the go and keeping your content maximized. Maybe I've been picking up some bad habits, but I've been pretty well trained by large screen and dual screen phones to multitask and going dual app or triple app is kind of mandatory for me these days, but it's the extras which really geek me out. And damn, I wish LG would make more noise about this kind of stuff, like active pen stylus support on the outer display. Continued from the Velvet and the V60, the wing can become a note competitor. Stylus support is super underrated. And for people who complain about LG UI, I don't think I've ever seen as deep a consideration for different uses and different needs. You swivel the phone screen out and you have this extra screen below, but you can lock this screen when you don't need it. Just like the dual display cases, you can turn this into a handle if you just wanna hold it. Now the dual display cases are fun for the extra options like customized game controllers. The Wings hidden display can become a trackpad and mouse cursor for the outer display. It's just so clean. Gestures work better on the Wing trackpad than many Windows laptops. Scrolling, selecting, dragging. It's crazy to see that on a phone, but contributes to the idea that your primary display should never be blocked even by your fingers. My fat little hobbit hand fingers. So maybe the original dual display case for the V50 felt a little tacked on or a bit gimmicky. To think that was last year and we're already seeing this kind of refinement and integration is insane. This screen action is not one thing you might use. It's not that singular solo gimmick. It's really well considered to fit in with LG's overall strategy this year that their phones are modular or flexible. So they give you the options to make it the phone you need. Though that does kind of complicate the conversation just a bit. LG's don't just work out of the box. They really thrive when a user takes a second to tailor the experience. I mean, if you'll pardon the tangent, I've just never understood that, especially as marketing, just working. It just works. It's just good enough to work. I don't want my phone to 
just work, I want my phone to be a perfect fit. But I digress. It's reassuring, handling the wing, how much horsepower LG is extracting from this processor. At the beginning of the year, we weren't seeing this hardware support 4K 60 frame per second video as one example. But LG is tackling that now and nearly matching the core camera performance of the V60. You lose 8K video and HDR, but you keep 4K 60 at the top bitrate options with full manual controls. And on top of that, you get the gimbal mode. This is a fascinating bit of hardware to include. A really wide camera sensor for shooting 1080p video, but pairs hardware and software to give us the look and feel of an actual motorized gimbal. You have a wide degree of movement to pan from the joystick, and you can lock the orientation surprisingly well to keep your horizon level. LGs have long included some of the best software stabilization around. They were the first to software stabilize 4K60. This gimbal Gimbal is crazy for smoothing out much more aggressive use. It works best in bright daylight, but it's incredibly sophisticated kit. If I have a complaint about the camera, it's LG's audio processing. Still really heavy handed noise reduction. And in my opinion, depending on what you're trying to record, can sound worse than the noise it's trying to scrub out. If you're listening LG, please give us an option to adjust this. The mics are solid when you can bypass that processing. We just need that switch or that toggle in the LG camera app. Maybe just make it a feature of the pro mode or the manual controls. And speaking of audio, if you're used to my commentary on other LG phones, you should know how I feel about the quad DAC. There is no headphone jack here. And that makes me kind of sad. The dongle included in the box is a better solution than including cheap USB-C earbuds. And it's a decent performer. I have a separate audio deep dive for more conversation on the audio situation over on patreon.com slash some gadget guy. But I got to tag a few complaints that I've heard on other reviews. Folks saying, oh, when the screen is out, it's really difficult to hit the power button or the volume rockers. They're kind of hack criticisms. Yes. When the screen is out, the volume keys are a little harder to hit. And complaining about that says to me, you didn't really use the phone. Quick flashback. You remember when LG's had volume rockers on the back? of the phone, what did LG do? They added a software volume rocker to the notification shade. So what do you think the wing does? Hmm. One of the major use points of the phone is moving controls to a surface that gets them out of the way of your content. Come on, techies, this really isn't that hard. And it's especially cool on the wing where you can control your volume settings from either display, depending on how you're holding it. But what about using the power button? I mean, if you're turning the screens off and you're really putting the phone down, you can just close the outer display, but if you're wanting to turn the screens off and keep it in this configuration, you just double tap and I feel like that was really easy. Am I totally off here? Was that not really easy? The main philosophical idea I want to spell out and the feeling I had while unboxing this phone, every decision here is meant to improve some kind of on the go use. The V60 is a more powerful computer, but to really lay that horsepower down, you kind of need to stop and use the phone, finish your task, and then you can move on with your day. The Wing is not a small phone, and it's not a light phone, but it's easier to use without putting your whole day on pause, even down to things like mounting it in a car. I haven't had terrific luck mounting my V60 dual display on my dash, but the Wing fits right in on my normal air vent mount. Battery life has been solid. I'm using the Verizon version of the wing here. I'm really not sure how to contribute to a more in-depth analysis about battery life. It's not just 5G, but it's also a second screen. It's kind of similar to the dual display cases. It seems to hold true that adding a whole separate display to a phone comes with similar power draw as cranking up a faster refresh rate. I like having a more fluid screen when scrolling through my app drawer, but I prefer having more realistic state to use multiple apps. In general, I'm getting better daily runtime on the wing than I did on the Velvet under similar conditions, so I feel pretty good recommending it for heavier use when out and about. I'm glowing a lot in this video because I feel LG has addressed most of my concerns from the teasers we saw earlier in the year. I was really anxious about a design 
with a swivel hinge. But for my glowing, we shouldn't overlook a few lifestyle concerns. Moving parts mean we can't seal this up like a regular phone. Folding phones, dual screens, pop-up selfie cameras, a swivel. We can't make this as water resistant as a static slab. LG is claiming the internal coating should make this decently splash resistant, but you're not gonna go swimming with the wing. Don't do that. TK Bay, don't go swimming with your wing. But a radical hardware change impacts other things that we might take for granted. It. We probably won't be able to make a total body protective solution for this phone. Now, one of the reasons I'm not taking off this case for the wing, I mean, I, I kind of like the look of the case. I think it's pretty sharp, but a lot of solutions will probably need a light adhesive. So this case has a tacky underside to help it stay seated on the back of the phone. I'll definitely be looking for some kind of glass screen protector for the outer screen. I don't think there's anything we'll be able to do about the hidden display. So don't think I might have missed those conflicting ideas. The wing empowers a more active kind of use, but it will be a little harder to protect the wing with more rugged options. There's a ton of custom code at play to make something like this work. Android on its own is not smart enough to handle multiple screens and the different UI elements needed to make this work. On the whole, performance is better than I was expecting, but you have to know there's going to be the odd transition or sticky moment considering how aggressively we're driving this idea. The most obvious, and you've probably seen it in other videos, is the carousel home screen. The phone has to register the completion of the flip, the second screen fires up, and then it switches the outer display over to this new UI. Or the momentary pause when you flip from the traditional camera layout to the gimbal mode. The phone rarely puts you on hold, but a few transitions can be a bit sticky for how much work the phone is really doing to manage something Android is not designed to do. And this is nitpicky. This is the me gripe. I wish the wing had a rear fingerprint sensor or at least a second fingerprint sensor on the hidden display. I love this action of flipping out the screen. I love it so much, I really wanna use that as my power button. But then it's weird unlocking the phone from the side when it's swiveled out. Instead, I'd probably recommend playing with your security settings. So if you have a watch or some Bluetooth earbuds that you use on the regular, that the phone just bypasses your lock screen when those accessories are connected. It's just so Star Trek satisfying to snick and then start using it. Whew. Okay, so I've rambled on long enough. We should probably wrap this up. LG Wing, where do we stand? It's really fun. It's really fun. I hope you at least walk away with that idea well expressed. Radical changes to phone hardware come with higher price tags. Happily, though this phone is at a premium tier price, the handful of compromises we need to make rarely manifest in performance or daily use. I'm trying to be really careful here not to sound like a tech reviewer who's only excited because there's something weird to talk about. That when it comes to non-Samsung or non-Apple phones, only worth making a video about them when there's a freak show feature to show off with my pretty B-roll. Once we're over the novelty, I wanna know that unique hardware brings stuff to the table that you can't get anywhere else. That it's not a one trick pony or a singular gimmick. And to me, that's more valuable to tech conversation or making a recommendation than, hey, this is weird. The wing absolutely does not get the same kind of traditional recommendation as more regular phones. The modular idea is similar to other LGs. Do you want a note competitor? Add a stylus. But now there's an action slant to this phone, which is different than a V60 or a Velvet. Also, unlike those phones where your dual display is a part-time solution on a case, you're married to the swivel hinge on the wing. The wing confirms my earlier hypothesis from the unboxing video for being the better phone to use on the go, and for folks who want to do more with their phones than covering the basics, like average consumers. Average consumers, are buying average phones. So we don't need to keep playing this game with more premium tier devices. Because when it comes to the wing, 
you probably won't want to put it down that often. As long as you're mentally prepared for the idea that different hardware should change your behavior, I don't think there's much risk for this radical form factor. It's a premium device that offers premium experiences, and there's literally nothing else like it. And it's really fun. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos, subscribing to the channel. Supporting your favorite content creators has never been more critical than it is today, so I greatly appreciate those of you who are looking down below in the description, checking out the links down there, or you might check out some of my merch. That kind of stuff really does help keep production rolling on this channel. You can also hit up somegadgetguy.com, hit the support page, and that's a current list of all of my affiliates and partnerships. Or you might consider joining the list of names currently scrolling by on your screen. That's an amazing community of really cool tech pals. They're basically the best people on the internet. So I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the web, at some gadget guy on the Twitters and the Twitch, and the Facebooks and the Instagrams. And I will catch you all on the next review.